What's happening, everybody? Welcome to episode 154 of the Games and Drafts podcast. Sunny G here, as always, with Finn Steel. Hello. And Steve. Hello. And we've got an action packed podcast today. We've got yeah, we the Eliminator. It's back for all those who've missed it. It's back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. We've got NXT 2.0 to talk about. We've got big sweaty men winning championships to talk about. We've got it all. This podcast has got it all, man. It's got everything. It's got everything. Absolutely everything. everything. We're one week closer to Christmas, Christmas as well. Here we go. Here we got we got our first batch of mince pies in at work. Nice. Did you chuck them straight in the bin? Uh, I would have I would done if it was me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a mince pie guy. Nor me. No, that's why I said chuck them straight in the bin. Yeah. I like them, but not in bloody September. Well, that's fair, yeah. That's totally fair. Where do I get get the Halloween verse and then we'll talk? Exactly. Okay, we'll talk after Halloween about mince pies. Ooh. Yeah, there we go. Sure. All right, fair enough. That, that's a good deal. Yeah, that's a good we'll deal. talk about how crap mince pies are after Halloween. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could be a new segment. Yeah, are you for or against mince pies? Maybe we maybe we do a, a, a tier. Look, we've done that before. You know, like like the game heap. But maybe we can yeah. do maybe we can do the dessert heap. Yeah, Christmas. <laughs> I like that. I like it. Christmas food heap. Christmas food heap. Love it. Nailed on. Let's Nailed do it. Nailed on for the third week in December episode of this podcast. Yeah. How are you? Yeah. people. Yes. Oh, man. Good to see. We're, we're planning ahead. Oh. Look at it's, it's just this year has been just I mean, victory for everybody. Victory for you guys listening to the podcast because you get one every week. Victory for us because we get to talk about shit that you want to listen to for some reason. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's a great time for everybody. Happy days. A, a top time to be alive. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man. Um right, I guess we start the same way that we always start. Hey Finn. What have you been playing? Well, I finally finished and platinumed. Uh, Persona 5 Royal. Finally. I think it was about 156 hours. But it was worth it. Had a big game. A shitload of hours. It's a long time. But it's still, you know, I could have played for another like 100 hours. It was that, it was that good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've moved on. I've gone back to Skyward Sword <laughs> on the Switch. Okay. Okay. Which is excellent still. Enjoying that. It is excellent. How far in are you? Um, I've just got my first uh, sword upgrade. Mm. Yeah, which is I think the fourth or fifth uh, dungeon. Um, yeah, something like that. But either way, you know, it's good. Yeah, I've got the whip. That's what I've got. I can't believe we haven't got a whip noise on the soundboard. Oh, no, I need to get one. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. uh, use the air on the head. <laughs> <laughs> to be, I would absolutely love it if Link like did any motion and the air horn noise played. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that would be so good. So good. It would be amazing. Uh, yeah, to so that. Uh, I also jumped on because No More Heroes Three came out, so I jumped on the first game on PS3. Okay, is it a, okay. is it a port or the reversion? Um, it's a bit of a janky port. It doesn't look super great. It's in HD, but it doesn't look. All are great. Its frame rate isn't good. Um, there's a lot of screen tearing. So not a great port, but it is a still game and it is still fun. And what was that on PS3? PS3, yeah. Oh, okay. Can you not? Um, can you not get all of them on Switch now? Oh, uh, you can. Yes. Uh, okay. I'll play the PS3 version simply because trophies. Fair enough. Yeah. Enough, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll probably play the second one on Switch. Um, but yeah, it's really good. I'll put it on the back burner for now. I've been using the mo- the move controller, which works surprisingly well. You can play with a normal controller as well, but I've been using that because it's fun. Oh, is it PlayStation Move compatible, is it? Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Right, okay. Works well. Good times, um, gimmicky. gimmicky. I know, right? Uh, but I'll put it on the back burner for now because the controls are very similar to Skyward Sword, but not quite the same, so I'll get confused and try to hit the wrong buttons. And... Understandable. You, so you use motion controls for Skyward Sword, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, I've gone tr- I've gone traditional with controller and, and just handheld mode. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Makes it, if you play it handheld, then yeah, obviously it makes a lot of sense. Well, yeah. Throw my switch around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what's going on on the screen because you can't see it because you're throwing it around so much. Um, yeah, so I put on the back burner and started playing uh, Psychonauts 2 instead. Oh, okay. Which cool. is okay. excellent. Yeah, right. I haven't got too right. far um, yet, but it's yeah, I'm enjoying it. Are you playing this on PlayStation 5? Yes. Okay. It's, it's a PS4 version, but enhanced with 60 FPS, which is yeah. super smooth, super silky, and I love it. So yeah. far, so good. Yeah. Really good game. Confusing story. Not really <laughs> sure what's going on, but it's really good. Uh, yeah, I think you probably need to play the first one a bit to understand it. Uh, fully. Did you but, play the first one? Uh, yes, way, way back. On the, I got it up there. <laughs> it was on Xbox. Oh, right. Um, okay. right okay. Yeah. I think I, played, I think I played on 360, but it was a long time ago. Uh, but yeah, it's excellent. It, I think it's a VR game as well, which carries on. Yeah, it's the first one VR oh, game. You know what? That, that, that VR game, I don't remember seeing anything about when it came out. No, no, same. It's kind of just kind of there. I haven't played it. I didn't need to play it. But it's called a Rhombus of Ruin. It's on PSVR and PC. I bet it's mind bending as, as fuck. Probably. <laughs> It'll probably hurt your brain, but. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. <laughs> That'll be, cool, be cool, though. Yeah, very cool. And yeah, that's about all I've been playing this week. Uh, how about you, Steve? I've been mainly playing Big Rumble Boxing, uh, Creed Champions, which I was lucky enough to get a code of. So thank you very much for providing oh, that. Cool. It's excellent. Superb game. I've seen it described as ready to rumble that's been modded with Rocky characters. And I think that's a really, really good description because it's just an excellent over the top sort of arcade boxing game. It's just really fun, really cool with all the Rocky characters that you know and love and some other unlockable characters as well. And from the Creed films as well, the uh, the spin-offs from, from the Rocky series. And each character's got its own story mode, so they're about an hour to get through, depending on how, how good you are, I guess. Yeah. You go through them, and each one has got its own story. And uh, it's great. It's just really, really great fun. Uh, great fun, And it's um, it's got a bit of a kind of a visual novel element to it as well, with the, with the kind of the, the story, the way it progresses, and the characters yeah. appearing on the screen and the text. And you move it along, and the characters change their emotions and the way they look depending on what's being said which is really really cool um but yeah it's just it's just a nice it's just a nice break from your kind of serious sport sim sort of game even even because i've been playing ufc and as much as i think it's a great game i just sometimes i just want to go on and beat someone up and it'd be ridiculously over the top and this is perfect it's it's excellent uh, one of the things that I do really, really like is in the story mode, there is training, a training element to, to some of it. There's not loads, but every now and then you have to do a bit of training and it's all kind of mini games that you do yeah. with the training. Um, you do them really quick. They're like straight one after the other and you do them three or four times. And actually when you look at it, it's a, I think is a little nod to the films because they look like training montages. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it is. Yeah, which which is which is what Rocky is quite famous for. You know, training montage, cheesy eighties music over the top. What, what more could you want? I mean, it makes me want to go and watch all the Rockies now, even the bad ones. Yeah, it's 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 great and a very achievable thousand G, I think as well. So you have to work for it, but it's achievable. So I'm going to plow my way through that and uh, and play that. But yeah. Really, really good, really, really good fun. Um, I've obviously been playing <clears throat> Football Manager a bit more, and uh, I jumped on Flight Sim on my lunch break uh, for a little bit. Just had a couple of little updates. Nice little uh, leisurely lunchtime flight there. Yeah, nice little leisurely lunchtime flight over over Paris. Paris. <laughs> yeah, it was very nice to see the sights. And... I've got a couple of games that I need to start playing. So I've got NBA 2K22, which I haven't started yet. Enormous game. Had to delete about four games to fit it in. <laughs> so it had better be good. Uh, but I know it will be. So I've got no issues there. Uh, but that is about it for me. Um, hoping to get a bit of gaming in this weekend as I won't be going very far. So, yeah, all good. All good. Good. Um, I've been playing a few different bits. Now, I meant to write them down and didn't, 
So now I've got to remember off the top of my head, which at this time of night, when I'm, my brain is switching off, is not a good thing. But we'll start here. Um, I've been playing Deathloop on PlayStation 5. Yeah. Now, oh my God. I mean, the reviews have been insane. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I mean, so, I mean, tens, nines, you know, even eights across the board. So very, very high scores for Deathloop. And they're, they're very much deserved. Now, Deathloop, you probably would have seen on sort of PlayStation showcases for what feels like the last 28 years because they've just been showing trailer after trailer after trailer. You're like, look, okay, we've seen enough. Don't need to see any more. But the trailers actually don't do it justice. Mm. Like, the way that the trailer looks, it looks like a frantic, completely, totally insane shooter um, with like power elements where you can bloody zip all over the place. And it's not really like that. It's a, a story of a, a recurring day, basically, in a loop. So you've, So you were the head of security for the place where the game is set. Um, somebody is after you, and basically you've got to go after her and eight other people. All right, and you've got like a day to do it. Okay. Right, and you can pick things up along the way. There's different ways you can play the game. It even tells you that you know play your way. It's like basically you play your way. Whether you want to go in guns blazing, whether you want to stealth, you know, there's so many different ways that you can play the game, and it's not totally insane where it's just hordes and hordes of enemies coming at you they're mm. placed in different places and you can you, you know you can approach the game however you with well, the levels however you want that's cool but um another thing that the the trailers don't really do justice to is the graphics because graphically it is absolutely stunning <laughs> it's superb like the the environments are amazing yeah everything about it basically is just really good looking the level of detail um, you know, on the environments, it's just, it's crazy. I mean, th this is a truly next gen game. Um, yeah. it implements yeah. the dual sense controller very well. Um, you know, I know it's happened in other games, but when one of the characters is communicating with you, uh, in the game, it comes through the, the dual sense controller. Oh, cool. Um, it has sort of haptic trigger feedback and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, this is very much. A, a true next gen experience and it's a game that uh, i wasn't really that bothered about if yeah, i'm being honest yeah, um same. i felt like i'd seen enough and i was like okay i've seen enough i don't need to see any more and yeah. i'm not really that interested but yeah, the same. yeah i can't recommend it enough like it's one of them games like you when you play it um, and you've you know you've had a session on it. You put your controller down. You go to bed or whatever. And then you know you can't stop thinking about it. It's one of those games that you just want to keep going back to because there's so there's so many different ways to approach it. There's so many different elements to the game. There is a hell of a lot of gameplay in there. I mean, from what I read, you can finish sort of the main story in around fourteen hours ish, fifteen mm. hours. Yeah, but it's much more than that. There's different ways you can do stuff and different areas you can go different collectibles, different powers to use. So there's just so much to do there. And there's an online element to it as well, where you play as the character that is after you in the oh, main wow. story of the game. That's cool. Ooh, so that's cool. it's, it's, um, I'd go as far as saying it's a, it's a, it's a masterpiece of a game. Wow. It kind of reminds me of uh, Returnal in the sense that you want to always keep coming back to it again and again. There's yeah, so many different definitely. Ways to do it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that was another game that, you know, I couldn't put down at the time. It was just one of the games just constantly on your mind because you want to see what's next. You want to see what the next boss is going to look like. You want to see what the new, the next area is going to look like. And there's, there's, there's you know, elements of that in Deathloop as well. But what, you know, there's different, there's parts of other games that are in there. So like if you die, you can, you can basically collect. So it's like Dark Souls, right? So you collect, you can sort of collect um i forgot what it's called but it's uh like re it's like residue resid residual something and yeah. you can collect it and if you die you drop it all <clears throat> but you can go back to where you died and recollect oh. it 
That's cool. Like Dark Souls. And you, yeah. use, you use the residual materials. Um, I'm probably calling it the wrong thing, but it's okay. People <laughs> who've made it will know what it's about. Just take it as Souls. Um, and you can yeah, use souls, it yeah. to sort of uh, make your weapons, so fabricate your weapons so that they appear even after you die. Wow. That's cool. So you get to keep them, basically, instead yeah. of sort of losing them when you die. But it's yeah, I mean, there's 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 just so much to like about it. It's funny. You've got um, really great uh, sounds throughout the game, both voice acting and music. Really, really good sounds. Great atmosphere. Great looking game. Plays so well. And it's just um, it's a game that I feel like everybody has to experience. Obviously, mm-hmm. right now it's just on PlayStation Five, and it's exclusive. I think for the next year. At least that's what people are saying. And then, of course, it will hit Game Pass because it's Bethesda. That's the point, yeah. So Xbox players, you are going to get to play it. Um, But you're going to have to wait a year for it because Sony have got exclusivity on it for uh, around a year. Cool. So it only a PS5, not beyond PS4? Yeah, it's just the next-gen game. So it's only PlayStation 5. Cool. Awesome. So definitely check that out at some point. Yes, definitely yeah. check it out. I think you've got my PlayStation profile. You just download it. Cool. Yeah, I might just, I might just do that. Definitely do it. I might thank just. you to the kind folks at Bethesda for uh, providing us with that code. Yeah, thank you. It's absolutely awesome. And yeah, can't recommend it enough. It would. I've not played all the way through it yet, but it's easily a 10 out of 10 game for me. Awesome. Nice. Wow. Yeah. High praise. Yeah, for sure. Really high praise. Um I've been playing NBA 2K22. Oh, yeah. Uh, the My Career Basically. mode has really sort of sucked me in, as it always does. Um, I like the idea of sort of uh, creating your own character, playing as that one one player in the team and building your career up. Mm. And I like the RPG elements that they've sort of put into the My Career this time with the city stuff and uh, taking tasks from people and finding different paths to how you want to take your career. There's uh, a lot of detail to it. And it's phenomenal as a package. Um, always the best presented sports game. I talk about it every single year on this podcast, but um, <laughs> it just keeps getting better. Wow. From a presentation and a gameplay and a graphical standpoint, it's, um, yeah, it's it's the best sports franchise that money can buy. Awesome. So um, that's another game I highly recommend. Mm-hmm. Uh, I picked up a couple of games this past weekend. So I bought Sonic Colors. Nice. And I bought Aliens Fireteam Elite. Very cool. Because uh, there were two games I wanted to try out, and they were both sort of reasonably priced, like £35 each. So literally two games for the price of one full price, <laughs> uh, you know, game. Um, Bargain. Sonic Colors, um, I think it's good. I, I doesn't feel really any different to any other 3D Sonic game to me. Yeah, be. I get that. Um, but it's not. It's, that, that's not a bad thing. I I always love the level design in these games. Yeah, I think the level design is great. I really do. But um, what I don't like about these these remakes or remasters is that the cutscenes are basically still the cutscenes from the original version. So they're not. Oh, I like the, C, of, the CG things. Yeah. Yeah. So they're not re-rendered to look modern. Yeah. yeah, like the levels are, which is a shame because it sort of takes it out a little bit, but it's not a major deal. But in terms of the levels and how you play the game, it doesn't really feel any different to the likes of Sonic Forces or anything like that. But Ooh. I do think it's a good game. But you can tell that it was made for the Wii just because of how short the 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 levels and the bosses are. Yeah, I think Sonic Forces takes a lot from colors. That's probably why. Right. Okay. Uh, I thought like that. But yeah, definitely of its time, it probably hasn't aged as well as some of the games. Um, I think level design, it, it really holds up. I think the level design is really good. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. But yeah, I look forward to jumping into that. I'm still waiting on the um, physical version, whenever that comes. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, they've not even announced a date for it, have they? Because it was just cancelled. Well, not cancelled, but put back. Yeah, yeah, it's delayed for unforeseen circumstances. Ass- well, assuming means. production issues. Probably. Due to, I don't know, yeah. whatever, but one of the many issues in the world going on right now, but we don't need to get into yeah. that. No, do the best But it is good. It is good. Um, it's one of them games you can put on, uh, blast through, marvel at the visuals in the in the actual levels, 
uh, turn off and not think about it because the story is nonsense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sonic, there's aliens that go inside you and they give you powers and then they just come back out again. And <laughs> Tails is translating what they say. Because oh, obviously, right. it sounds good. Gotta go fast. Yeah. Jesus. So it's, just, it's, it's, a, it's a 3D Sonic game. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> it's the long and short bit. <laughs> but it's, not, it's, not, it's not a bad game. No, not a bad Sonic game. No, like, no. Like, <laughs> like one of the many bad Sonic games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want a bad Sonic game, there's many of them, but this isn't one of them. Yes, good. Um, Aliens Fight Team Elite is really good fun. Awesome. It's basically a third-person horde shooter set in the Aliens universe like the films. Yeah. But it's really good. So basically, um, you create your own colonial marine, and um, you literally just play through story levels, um, either with bots or with real humans. And the gunplay is really good in third person. Uh, I like the upgrade system. I think that's really good. The graphics are, are good on next gen. It's a next gen game. So I've got it on Xbox, same as Sonic. But um, yeah, it's. Nice. I, I really like it. It's really addictive. It's just got a really good, fun gameplay loop. And awesome. um, it's, it's worth a 35 quid. It's not going to yeah. be everyone's cup of tea, but it's, uh, it's, a, really, it's a really fun shooter. Yeah, I don't know if I quit is a good price for it. I think it was if it was full price, less people would be oh, gotcha. look into it. But yeah, I don't buy quit. You can't go wrong, really, can you? No, I agree. I agree totally. I mean, um, if it was a seventy quid game, I don't. It wouldn't do well at all. It'd bomb and just would be on sale super quick. Yeah, yeah. But thirty five quid's a really good jumping in price, and there's a lot of content in there. And you know, again, there's a lot of replayability. Um, you know, factor to it. So it's yeah, definitely worth definitely definitely worth checking out. If you like the alien movies and you enjoy horde shooters in third person. So I think Gears of War horde mode, but with xenomorphs coming at you and not grubs. <laughs> cool. cool. Uh with a story as well. With a story that's not even terrible. So that's another bonus. Bonus, yeah. Cool. So yeah, there you go. I've been playing a, a few different bits uh this week and i've had a blast doing it as well i'm looking forward to probably jump into death loop for an hour before i head up to bed tonight and uh yeah no just you say an hour now it'll be like five hours later i'll just perform one more bit yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like three hours sleep <laughs> yeah that's it yeah get up for work at like seven and be like oh uh, uh. <laughs> what's up with you today death loop <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah man a lot of great games out and coming out this month has been insane for it there's still a lot of yeah. releases to come this month as well I believe so so many so many huge games come out in such a short, short space of time it's amazing yeah it's crazy and not good if you uh, if you want to spend money on games <laughs> yeah all right you're literally <laughs> working working to buy games <laughs> pretty, much. pretty much don't worry about eating just get the games yeah. that you want to get nah just eating to eating yeah, eating's for dweebs, like sleep. <laughs> exactly. There's <laughs> <laughs> a tin of beans, you can get a tin of beans for 10p. Just live off beans. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. live off beans. Just fight your way <laughs> to life. Just, just straight out of the can. Or Spoon. die of COVID yeah. like Steve there. Yeah, <laughs> well, man, I've got a really bad cough. It's not COVID. <laughs> um, Steve, uh, I feel like you should explain your screen name today. So... Uh, as you can oh, see, yeah. <laughs> Finn and myself, we, we have our normal screen names. But Steve has Captain Glass Ankles. Please explain why. The long and short of it is I twisted my ankle at the weekend. Ooh. And I ended up in a cast. My Ooh. leg was in a cast. So, Ouch. yeah, I uh, have a history of rolling my ankles. They're very weak for God knows what reason. Probably years of playing five-a-side football and various other things. And yeah, I uh, this one was quite a bad one, and it's very, very bruised. And I went down to A and E on Sunday, and they said I've cracked a bone in my ankle, and oh. they also were cracked. It was a little, a little, the tiniest, tiniest one. But uh, they also saw two more cracks in there that they think happened years ago. So yeah. that just tells you sort of. And, Glass ankles is something that I've kind of always called myself and other people have called me because it always happens. But this time it was a pretty bad one. And yeah, I'm, I'm currently sporting a RoboCop kind of leg boot. It looks awesome. Yeah, right. to be fair. 
So yeah, the cast <laughs> got taken off yesterday, uh, which was a great relief because it was so annoying, so so oh, annoying. Wow. So yeah, I'm in a I'm in a walking boot. Uh, I've got crutches, and um, yeah, I find out in a couple of weeks where, a couple of weeks whether it was actually a uh, a bone crack or whether I've actually got ligament damage. Which if it's ligament damage, that's actually worse apparently. So mm-hmm. we shall see. So yeah, I've uh, I've had a fun fun uh, few days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. man, man. The joys are getting old, eh? Yeah. Well, I mean, this. Yeah, I mean, it was only a matter of time before something really bad happened with my ankles. I mean, you you've seen it loads of times, Sonny, when we played football. There I am running down the wing like a gazelle, like a young Ryan Giggs, and then yeah. whoop, yeah, go there goes the ankle. The time I fell off the curb on the way to school, you know, that was yeah. uh, quite sexy, really. Quite sexy, really. Way off I went, you know. It, was, <laughs> it just does it. It's one of them. It's a little bit like the ankle equivalent of, uh, is it narcolepsy? You know, when people just fall asleep. Yeah, it's a yeah. bit like that. It's like my ankle's like, oh, this uh, this seems like a flat bit of uh, flat bit of surface. It'd be a shame if, Wah! and just twist. <laughs> that's it. But for no, like an RKO, out of nowhere, bang. Yeah. Right, and that's it. It just goes. So, um, wow. yeah. Ligament damage out of nowhere. Oh my god! <laughs> His ligaments are snapped in half. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's not been fun. Uh, it's still very, very swollen. I've looked like I've got the colours of the rainbow on my ankle in mm. terms of bruising, which is the first time that's ever happened. So that's how how, how bad it is. But oh, yeah, gosh. I will survive. I'm sure you will. I will survive. <laughs> yeah, I can't be bothered to sing. Yeah. <laughs> So that's it, Captain Glass Ankles for a couple of weeks. Oof. AKA so, Cripple H. Cripple H. <laughs> yes, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I won't be doing any pedigrees anytime soon. <laughs> that's fair. Well, obviously, we wish you a speedy recovery back to. Yes. Uh, Thank you very much. I'm sure I'll be fine. Back to 85% health. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 85 is, is that's the dream. You know, yeah. Yeah. Back that to 68% health. Like 68% that. is is kind of peak these days. Peak. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh. we we're, we're laughing. We're laughing. <laughs> we're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> we're laughing at your pain. <laughs> Finn, is there any gaming news to speak of this week? Uh, yeah, a few things. Let's have All a right. look. Uh, there's one big thing. There's quite a big leak. Uh, recently, where has it gone? Here it is. So, uh, there's a huge NVIDIA database leak where it has leaked a bunch, a hell of a lot of games that potentially could be coming soon, or at least be announced soon. I've got a list here uh, games from multiple publishers. Um, so, we've got Square, 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 Square Enix, Square Enix. Um, we have Kingdom Hearts 4, very nice. Uh, Tomb Raider Anniversary, which could be a port to uh, coming consoles. Okay. Uh, Final Fantasy IX remake. It's good to just be the port of the PS4 remake. Well, remaster. Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics remaster. Yes, please. And Chrono Cross remaster, which was a game that was a sequel to Chrono Trigger, which came out only in America and Japan. So that'd be nice for us in the UK. Okay. So that's cool. Uh, Capcom has uh, the Resident Evil 4 remake. It's been rumored. Nailed on. Absolutely. Uh, Leon! Fighters- <laughs> Leon! Help! Uh, Street Fighter 6 uh, cool Street, Dragon... Street Fighter 2 ridiculous edition <laughs> yeah Street Super Fighter Turbo 2... <laughs> yeah Street, Street Fighter 2 Ryu and Ken play pool edition uh, <laughs> yeah uh, Super all... Street Fighter 2 Turbo HD remix it's a yeah. real game Street Fighter 5 uh, has been around for fucking ages now it has um, it's gotten better but still not super great apparently but they use it don't they? they they use it in like Esports fighting competitions or whatever they're called. Yeah, they still use it. Apparently, there's still problems with it. The netcode is apparently really bad, so you can't play it online uh, efficiently. Uh, so that sucks. But we've got a new one coming soon potentially. Uh, Dragon's Dogma Two, which is very cool. Originally a 360 game, I believe, an underrated uh, RPG. Mm-hmm. So that'd be cool. Uh, and mo- a new Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter Six. Oh yeah, that'll that'll happen. There's loads oh, yeah. of them now. Uh, yeah, yeah. One just came out on Twitch, isn't it? Yeah, two of them just came out on Switch, like the Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Stories 2 or something. 
Yeah, that's the one, yeah. So there's that. Uh, take two, we have the uh, rumoured GTA 3 by City and San Andreas remasters. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Uh, Bioshocks. Uh, Bioshocks? Bioshocks. 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 I don't even say it. <laughs> that game. Uh, Bioshock RTX remaster, whatever that is. Right, okay. As well as a new Bioshock, just just uh, titled Bioshocks 2022. I want to see Bioshocks now. Like I Bio want socks, yeah. a pair of socks that have a big daddy on them. <laughs> yeah, that's they can be called week. bio socks. And bio if, socks, they, yeah. if they don't exist, um, they're missing a trick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a new Bioshock potentially coming. So that's cool. Cool. Very nice. Great games. Absolutely. Uh, EA has uh, Titanfall 3 rumoured. Good. Cool. Uh, a Mirror's Edge remaster. Okay. And as of yet, untitled game by uh, Respawn. Right, okay. Mm. Uh, we've got Tekken 8 from Bandai Namco. Yep, I could say that would be nailed on. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Tekken uh, 7 big... was a huge success. Oh yeah, big time. Great, big game. And they got Platinum, mm. actually. Yeah, it was an easy Platinum, I think, that one. It was, yeah. Good game. Uh, we've got the Talos Principle 2 from Devolver Digital. Interesting. Cool. Uh, Crytek has Crisis 4. Just pretty much a Guarantee. Was that, was that not announced already? It might have been actually. I don't know. There's a Crisis remastered trilogy, which says to me that Crisis Four is almost now done. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, we've got a Batman Arkham Knight remaster. Cool. That was rumored a while ago. Oh, was it? Yeah. Cool. Not so much a remaster, but like a, an update for next gen consoles. Ah, uh, that makes sense. That's cool. Um, and um, exciting, uh, Half Life Two remaster. Hmm. Oh, okay. I'd play that. Bring that to modern consoles. That'd be really cool. Yeah, don't don't bother making Half Life Three. Just uh, keep rehashing <laughs> Half Life Two. It's yeah, like just, GTA. Just milk it's, yeah. it's like GTA Five. You know, isn't it? Just don't don't worry about bringing <laughs> new games out. Just bring yeah. the same game out, like with a little bit of extra stuff and marginally better better graphics. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, yes, yeah, so I had a lot of games there leaked. Um, some big ones like Game Hearts 4, Street Fighter 6, mm. games like that. Um, yeah, very cool. Thanks, NVIDIA. Yeah, Idiots. nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for leaking information. <laughs> it gives us things uh, to talk about. <laughs> it does. Uh, what else? So, did you t- the new GTA 5 trailer for next gen consoles or current gen consoles um, has a hell of a lot of dislikes. It currently has 151,000 dislikes on YouTube and only 26,000 likes. Wow. So people aren't happy with this trailer. Why is that? Well, to it's... be honest, it looks no different. Exactly. Right. That's that's the main reason. It just looks like the current gen version. This is a bad trailer. It's not a good trailer at all. So people are just like, why are you milking this? Why did you make such a shit trailer showing off nothing? Mm. Yeah. I mean Weird. you may as well just put the title screen and like four next gen consoles in fucking Cosmic Sands. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Cosmic Sands, yeah. Written underneath it, and people would be like, okay, we know that's coming. Because <laughs> everybody has GTA 5 at yeah. least one time. At least once, yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. They're giving it away with Happy Meals at McDonald's these days. <laughs> oh, it's the Grand Theft Auto Happy Meal. <laughs> you get, a, you get a free little Trevor and a copy of GTA for your PC. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, sweet. This is my fifth, my fifth copy. Nice. Yeah, cool. I might come back <laughs> next week and they'll have the PlayStation version I can have for free. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else we got? Uh, so Dying Light 2, the game that is uh, constantly being delayed, has been delayed oh, yeah. again into early 2022. Shocker. Good God, man. They only just showed <laughs> off some like new stuff for this as well, like some recent, like real recent, like new gameplay for it and stuff. Yeah, new trailer and yeah, now delayed again. Is this game ever going to come out or is it just going to get delayed until forever? Yeah, I mean, it's just coming out at the same time as Gran Turismo. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. Half-Life 3. And GTA 6. Six. Also, yeah. don't <laughs> delay it until February, you dipshits. <laughs> I know, right? That's every, every game's going out in February. Yeah, like Horizon comes out in February. Are you stupid? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's some other good stuff that comes out in February, I'm sure. Yeah, there's other games. I can't remember what they are, but yeah, it's a, it's a stack month. That's a cop out. It's not coming out in February. I doubt it. I don't think It'll it comes be. out in February. I think you see it um, second quarter next year. 
Yeah, that sounds about right. I think February is the first game was extremely buggy at launch. So I think they're trying to get rid of, hopefully, they're trying to get rid of every single bug they can, mm. or as many as they can, so it doesn't turn into like the first game or like another cyberpunk. Wait, it just yeah. doesn't work. Oh, you remember <laughs> that game? Uh, no. I try, I try not to. Apparently I've got another update recently to fixing bugs. But yeah, not, fuck. No. Jesus Christ. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> They've it's basically, it's they've basically still... got pest control on that game now because <laughs> it's just a constant bug problem. Yeah. <laughs> Every update, bug fixes. Really? Yeah. yeah. Still? Yeah, really, yeah. Who the fuck? Yeah. I mean, when did nah. it come out? Uh, months ago. About this, time, about this time last year? Maybe a touch later? October? <laughs> October yeah. last year? Yeah. No, no, it was last was, year, wasn't it? Was it just November. Before... November, wasn't wow. it? Was it just before the new consoles came out? I think so, yeah. Yes. So it was about October, November, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd forgotten it was a like, whole like year ago almost. That's yeah. Insane. Yeah. yeah. Such on. a good idea for a game and a, a beautiful world. It's such a cool setting, yeah. But, but it's just so bad. <laughs> it's so broken. Like is people are like apolo- apolo- absolute apologists for it. Like, oh, no, nah, it's not that bad. I mean, he runs well on my console. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Don't fucking lie. It doesn't. It just doesn't. Tenth of December, it came out last year. So wow, wow. crazy. Not far. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, we see like glitch compilations on YouTube. It's just so funny. It's laughable. It's absolutely yeah. laughable. Yeah, I, I, I might go and watch. All over the place. Yeah, I might go and watch some of those because I, I, I didn't really look. As soon as I heard how buggy and shit it was, I just didn't, I just didn't really bother with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I might go and, uh, might go and have a look, watch a few <laughs> videos. What, what that comes to mind is uh, you in a, in a lift with Keanu Reeves. I can't remember his character name. Um, but the lift goes and he shoots up into the sky and you're just left standing there. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the one where you're walking around just completely naked, you know, oh, yeah. dick on flop, you know, just, just hanging out. It's just, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah, good game. Yeah, really good game. Select your dick size, but that's about as good as it gets. <laughs> yeah. So we can all live yeah. our fantasies with that bit, and then the rest yeah. of it, not good. No. <laughs> no. Like, I was like, um, I, I remember playing it and like my car was parked up turn around and there was some like my car was just a shell and there was somebody stood in the middle of it <laughs> nice so what the that, like that, at that point that, that's when I turned it off I was like I ain't playing this this fucking sucks <laughs> yeah I didn't blame it which, which, which one was so out of the two what was worse for bugs was it Cyberpunk or WWE 2K20 mm. Cyberpunk really well, they're Probably. both as bad. I mean, WWE I mean, wasn't a good game. 2K20 isn't a good no. game. It's um, now it's just about a functioning wrestling game. Right. And Cyberpunk's just about a functioning um, first person <laughs> open world RPG. Yeah. Um, but they both should have been better. Yeah. Cyberpunk's the Go. bigger disappointment because oh, nobody absolutely. really expected. To, no one really gives a shit about the WWE games apart from <laughs> wrestling fans. Yeah, good everybody point. wanted to play Cyberpunk, <clears throat> and it was just yeah. a massive, massive letdown. Yeah, I think it's finally back up on PSN now. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. This time, yeah. Well, it's no longer an Xbox exclusive. Damn. <laughs> 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 oh, that's mad. Crazy. Not even 2K20. Not even 2K20 got taken off PSN. Yeah, yeah. Cyberpunk. I think that was that was the bit where you thought, "Wow, this is this is a really broken game." When it got pulled, you just yeah. thought, "Jesus!" And there are some, sh- I mean, there are some shit games out there, aren't there? Yeah. Oh yeah. The quality that, control yeah, on PSN is non-existent. It's so non-existent. That's been taken off. Oh, it just tells you how how bad it it was. Goddamn yeah. snake boat <laughs> made yeah. certification and made its way to the PlayStation Store. And Cyberpunk just gets sh- ripped away because it's broken as shit. Snake yeah. just there, like dr- like the worst game of all time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, amazing. Uh, what other game news you got? Oh, here's an Xbox exclusive for you. It's a brand new Peppa Pig game coming. Hell yeah. Exclusive to Xbox. Seriously? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, you can make your own character and hang out with Peppa Pig. I hate that prick. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. What what the what's the thing say? Um, is it a GTA Five reskin? Pretty <coughs> much, yeah. It's a story-driven game of players creating their own animal character, spending time with Peppa and her family. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I didn't say a whole lot about it. Just it's the game. I mean, that obviously must be enough to entice people in. Yeah, I mean, you What's know, this? if kids are big around. I get to make my own animal and then <laughs> hang out with Pepper and her family. I can't wait. Yeah. Weird. Anyway, yeah. so that's a thing. Fun. And it's about the game news, isn't it? And the thing that's quite funny is there's an AEW sign this week. It's like, it's like you weeb should play uh, Disco Elysium or something like that. Oh, I saw that, <laughs> actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that as well. I said, they'll play Disco Elysium, you weebs. <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> Which I think funny intent to at some point. Um... But yeah, that's funny. And that's about the gaming news. All right, good times. Yeah. We're rolling so far on this week's podcast. Rolling. Oh, yeah. Nice PlayStation rolling, glass. Rolling, rolling. Thank mm. you. Very cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's some real good PlayStation merch out these days. Like gaming merch in general, actually. Like, yeah. you could buy it anyway. You yeah. go into Primark, there's just shitloads of mm. PlayStation t shirts and Xbox t shirts and stuff like that. And they even had a cool Street Fighter range. So that was that's good times. And it's all cheap yeah. as shit as well. Like,. Eight quid for a t-shirt, six quid for a t-shirt. Bargain. I have a uh, PlayStation pair of slippers. Nice. I have as well, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice for the same pair. <laughs> are they grey? <laughs> uh, no, they're black with PlayStation symbols. Uh, mine are grey with PlayStation symbols. A pair of fanboys. Uh, yeah. I know. Yeah. I got, I got a PlayStation <laughs> hoodie, a PlayStation pyjama, two lots of PlayStation pyjamas. Nice. Oh, hell yeah. I'm killing <laughs> I thought you were going to say PlayStation vagina then. I, I, I briefly said that. Thought that as well. <laughs> <laughs> vagina. Um. That's for the extreme fanboys. Yeah. You get yeah. the PlayStation flesh flashlight with the uh, the <laughs> <laughs> the PlayStation symbols down the middle of it. Oh, you see, you've seen them. Uh, yeah, I've got one. I got one. I, yeah, I, know, I, know, I know. I know a couple of people that would probably buy one for them. I've, I've got. Uh, I got sent one for review. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh man! Uh, um, <laughs> what? Why is it we can never have a normal show? Well, I don't know. We're, we're doing well. Okay. Obviously, that, I think <laughs> it's going to get look, worse. It's going to get worse. worse. Yeah, that's fine. And that, that's what's unique about this podcast. Yeah, we don't give a shit. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much. We take <laughs> us the uh, the the percentage of you know how we take ourselves seriously is incredibly low. Possibly that even is, negative. That yep. is the, the motto or like the the um, mission statement of this mm. podcast. Games and grabs. We don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> if like yeah. we had a crest. Yeah. That's what it would. That's what it would be. We don't <laughs> give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you care more than we do. <laughs> <laughs> you care. We don't. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Ah, oh, I definitely got COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Captain COVID. Captain COVID. That's next week. <laughs> oh, I'm there like, I've been playing. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't joke about that. Yeah. Next week, you come on, actually have it. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the way things are going. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Fucked ankle, COVID. Mm. <laughs> Small penis. Um. <laughs> 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 ah, right. Let's so we told you that it was coming back, and it's back. Me. This is the Eliminator Pub Quiz Edition. Yeah. Steve, explain yes. the I mean, rules of the Eliminator Pub Quiz Edition. So. Each week, there are going to be three rounds, 10 questions per round on random. Each round's going to have its own uh, theme. You'll, okay. It'll make okay. sense in a moment. 10 questions, quick fire. Write your answers down. And we'll revisit the answers at the end of the 10 questions. Whoever's got the most out of 30 wins. There's a sudden death, if, sudden death question if there is a draw at the end of the 30 questions. Mm-hmm. And 
we'll do a best of five. So effectively first to three, but we'll see if people like it. We'll, we'll extend it. Best of seven, best of nine. You know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how we go. But okay. that is the plan for now. So I'll read the question. You write your answer down and then I'll move on to the next one. And then can we'll I, can, I don't have a pen and paper with me. So can I type mine on the notes app on my phone? If you, oh, hmm. I know it's dodgy ground. Quiz rules, no phones, no phones. But <laughs> right, look, well, I can well, go to another part of the room and get pen and paper. Finn, I'll, what do you think? Um, I'll allow it for now. You will allow prepared. it. You're sitting there with a pen. Be more, I, I, I don't, I don't be, be, more prepared, be more prepared next week, please. Well, yeah, I, we'll, even we'll knew, I even knew it was not. happening, and <laughs> I'm still not prepared. If you happen to get yeah. next week, then I will, I automatically win. Okay, well, look, I'm going to bring I'm going to bring the notes app up on my phone. Hang on, here we go. Look, there's the notes app on my phone. Okay, right. I believe. Okay. And yeah. Okay, so before we start the pub quiz, obviously, I just want to let you know that if you want tickets for the meat raffle, go and see Tracy behind the bar. They are <laughs> a ticket or two pound a strip. The meat is provided by Frank's Butchers. Nice. Cheers, Frank. It's a lovely, good bundle in there. Some lamb, bit of beef, plenty of chicken, some sausages, black pudding, lovely. So uh, 50p a ticket or two pound a strip of five. Do they have a vegan <laughs> okay. there? So, uh, yeah, round, so is everyone ready? <laughs> is everyone ready? I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Okay. Round one is all about our favourite Tuesday night wrestling show, NXT. Yeah. Okay. So, question number one. Oh, shit. Finn. I forgot my music. Hold on. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> We're out of practice. Yeah, we are. We are. <laughs> question number one. What is Dexter Loomis's middle name? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, love it. Same as Finn's. <laughs> hey. <laughs> okay. Only, in, only in school. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two. Who was Daniel Bryan's storyline mentor in NXT? Mm. Who was Daniel Bryan's storyline mentor in NXT? Okay. Question number three. Who became the inaugural NXT North American Champion? So the first. Question number four. Who were the first tag team to win the Dusty Cup? Who were the first tag team to win the Dusty Cup? Yeah. Question number five. Roger, it was pub quiz style. Just keep going. Back in August 2015, NXT held its first takeover event outside of Full Sail University. In which US city did the event take place? So in August 2015, NXT held its first takeover event outside of Full Sail University. In which US city did the event take place? guess that one yes. okay question number six the nxt tag titles were introduced in 2013 and won by adrian neville and oliver gray who did they defeat to win the titles i don't think i was watching nxt back then <laughs> jesus um the nxt tag titles were introduced in 2013 and won by adrian neville and oliver gray who did they defeat to win the titles Question number seven. Back when NXT was a game show, who won the fourth season of NXT? There are four seasons. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so. Sorry, I forgot the caveat. If anyone disagrees with the answer, blame the internet. Who won the fourth season? Yes. Question number eight. 
we can revisit if you've not got answers for some. Who was the first NXT champion? Question number nine. How many WrestleMania main events have featured a former NXT wrestler? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So how many WrestleMania main events have featured a former NXT wrestler? Sorry, um, yes. Question number 10. Survivor Series 2019 saw NXT face SmackDown and Raw for the first time. How many points did NXT get on their way to winning the Survivor Series as a show? So how many points did NXT get at Survivor Series 2019? Okay, do you need me to repeat any questions? Uh, I'm good. I think I'm good, yeah. Okay, let's go through the answers for round one then. So what is Dexter Loomis's middle name? Sonny, what answer did you get? Gaylord. <laughs> As per so, last night, it is Gaylord. Yep, Gaylord. Okay. Who was Daniel Bryan's storyline mentor in NXT? It was The Miz. Mm -hmm. The Miz. The Miz. The Miz. Who became the inaugural NXT North American champion? It was Adam Cole, baby. Ah, damn it. I remember Scott Gano. Tony Gargano. Oh, okay. Mm. He won it in the ladder match at uh, TakeOver. Correct. Yeah. Who were the first tag team to win win the Dusty Cup? It was Samoa Joe and Finn yeah. Balor. Yeah, oh, that's what I thought. Damn it. I've been, that I've was been a, Pete Dunne and someone. Was a, but, okay. Yes, that was. Good guess. Back in August 2015, NXT held its first takeover event outside of Full Sail University. In which US city did the event take place? The answer is Brooklyn. Damn it. I put New York. I did too, yeah. I'll give you it. Okay. As you both put New York, I'll give it you. Brooklyn's okay. technically not. Yeah, right. Yeah. New York. Oh, thank you. Brooklyn's different to Manhattan, but there we go. It's all New York. It's all New York. The NXT tag titles were introduced in 2013 and won by Adrian Neville and Oliver Gray. Who did they defeat? The answer is Harper and Rowan. I will accept the Wyatt family. If you put wow, it. I put the Ascension. I did too. What a yeah. coincidence. Unlucky. Unlucky. <laughs> to be honest, it's the only NXT tag team I could think of. From back then. Yeah, yeah same here. Just yeah. an absolute brain freeze. Yeah, same. Back when NXT was a game show, who won the fourth season of NXT? The answer was Fandango. Really? Oh, really? Wow. I, I put Wade Barrett. He won I the first one. Dallas. <laughs> Wade Barrett won the first one, I think. All right. Wow. Who was the first NXT champion? It was, of course, everyone's favourite fashionista, Seth Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. <laughs> How many WrestleMania main events have featured a former NXT NXT wrestler? Yeah, sorry. How many WrestleMania main events have featured a former NXT wrestler? The answer is nine. Oh, I put Bloody seven. With four. <laughs> Well, you think yeah. about it. Reigns was Reigns, Reigns has NXT. been in the belt four. You had you one. had Be you had Becky Lynch in the oh, in the triple course. threat. You had Drew McIntyre was the main event the second night of Mania oh, in the COVID could, yeah. year. Um, yeah, you had you obviously you had well yeah Reigns and Seth and Brock and yeah nine. Survivor Series 2019 saw NXT face SmackDown and Raw for the first time. How many points did NXT get? They got four. Point. Oh, damn it. I put, I put five. I put six. Okay, so Sonny, how many did you get? Six. So Sonny, you got six. Finn, how many did you get? Uh, four. Six and four. So Sonny, you're two ahead so far. We'll carry on. Round two. Same again. Ten questions on this specific subject. Here we go. So the second round is all about our favorite Italian plumber, Mario. Nice. 
So Mario's first appearance in a Nintendo game was in 1981 in Donkey Kong, but he wasn't called Mario. What name was given to the character? Question number two. Some of these are a bit easy. What colour is Mario's hat? <laughs> number two. What colour is Mario's hat? Yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow. Yeah, no. Question number three. Who played Mario in the 1993 film Super Mario Brothers? Awful film. Terrible, terrible, dreadful. Fucking film. awful film. That was his name. The worst of it is, I knew the answer before you even finished asking the question. I know who it is, but I can't remember stupid name. <laughs> So this is a true or false, and I'll try and read this without laughing. So true or false, Nintendo owned the rights to two porn films called Super Horneo Brothers and Super <laughs> Horneo Brothers 2 that star Ron Jeremy as Mario. True or, true or false, Nintendo owned the rights to two porn films called Super Horneo Brothers and Super Horneo Brothers 2 that star Ron Jeremy as Mario. I want that to be true. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I desperately want it to be true. Imagine them blurring out Ron Jeremy's privates. <laughs> Question number five. How many bells does a Mario hat cost in the game Animal Crossing? Jeez. How many bells does a Mario hat cost in the game Animal Crossing New Horizon? I think I have one. Yeah, I have as well. I can't remember though. No. Question number six. Which Mario related game has the lowest rating on Metacritic and for which console was the game available on? Jeez. Um, oh. Probably this. Lowest rated. Lowest rated Mario related game. Um, in fact, forget forget the what console it was on, just which one was the lowest rated. Just name the game. Oh. Okay, question number seven. Which Mario related game has the highest Metacritic score? Question number eight. As of June 2021, how many units has the entire Mario franchise sold? Is it more or less than 750 million? So how many units has the entire Mario franchise sold? Is it more or less than 750 million? Question number nine. Earlier this year, a sealed copy of Super Mario 64 sold for one and a half million dollars at auction. A month later, the record was broken by an unopened copy of which Mario game, which sold for two million dollars. Repeat that Wait. question again, sorry. Earlier this year, a sealed copy of Super Mario 64 sold for one and a half million dollars at auction. A month later, the record was broken by an unopened copy of which Mario game? Got it, okay. And it sold for two million dollars. There's a very interesting YouTube video by uh, Carl Jobst about this whole thing, about how it goes into it, like how the whole thing's basically it's a massive scam to get prices up. Yeah, really? I think I saw. Um, I think I saw a video about if it's the right one. I think I saw a YouTube video similar as well, where a guy goes to like an auction place and asks what it's worth, and this guy doesn't really know much about it. So he gets a guy in, and they basically sort of talk about it. And he says, "Yeah, this is the highest rated um, sort of sealed copy of a game we've ever had," because um, wow. he was like a games rating type person, like for quality. Yeah. 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 Okay, I'll check that out. Um, and question number 10, what colour eyes does Mario have? What colour eyes does Mario have? Sonny is now looking around the room to see if we've got any Mario memorabilia knocking around. Finn is also looking. What are you doing around here? Look over there. <laughs> okay, 
So let's go through round two. All about Mario. Wow. <coughs> Question number one. Mario's first appearance in a Nintendo game was in 1981 in Donkey Kong, but he wasn't called Mario. What name was he given? He was called Jumpman. What colour is Mario's hat? It's red. Who played Mario in the 1993 Oscar winning film Super Mario Brothers? <laughs> it was everyone's favourite Bob Hoskins. That's, that's the guy. What could it remember the name of? <laughs> True or false? Nintendo owned the rights to two porn films. The answer is true. Wow. <laughs> that's so they, that's they, awesome. I put true. I'm so desperate for it to be true. They, yeah, um, they bought the rights for it and then buried it so deep that it cannot be found anywhere. Wow. Such a Nintendo thing to do as well. Yep. Yeah. I think the fact that they probably like might have... The, the company that made the, the films may have gotten away with it if it wasn't for the fact that Ron Jeremy, who famously has a moustache and is fairly short and looks a bit like Mario, was called Mario in the in the film. Right. Better called him something else that might have got away with it. But there we go. <laughs> Which Mario related game has the lowest rating on Metacritic? It is Mario Party Advance for the Game Boy Advance. Really? Wait, is that the was that was that question five? I think you skipped Sorry, it. Sorry, it wasn't. It was question six. That was question six. I've skipped, skipped question five. Sorry. Good, good uh, well spotted. Question number five was how many bells does a Mario hat cost in the game Animal Crossing? It is 1,500 bells. Wow. Well, yeah, I thought, with a thought, I guess the, the game I was thinking of was way, a lot earlier than like Metacritic, I guess. Because I was thinking like yeah. Mario was missing for the yeah. CDI. So which game was it, sorry? So it was Mario Party Advance for the Game Boy Advance. It got to wow. a Metacritic of 55. Oof. Which Mario-related game has the highest Metacritic score? It is Super Mario Galaxy. Oh, oh, Super Galaxy 2. Damn it. I bought Odyssey. <laughs> Fuck. There's a score of so 97. Wow. Jesus. Wow, 97. That's wow. Insane. As of June 2021, how many units has the entire Mario franchise sold? Is it more or less than 750 million? I put more. The Me answer too. is more. 758.06 million units of something Mario related. Which is, I mean, to be fair, which is not really that difficult to believe because there are so no, many different Mario games. Plus, if you remember yeah. rightly, at some point, I think Super Mario um, All Stars was built into the, the uh, SNES. Mm. Yeah. How was it? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I am. Um, one of the questions I looked for, um, but I couldn't get a solid answer, was how many games, how many different games has Mario featured in? Because, you know, you've got Mario, Sonic Olympics, and blah, blah, blah. But the only answer I could find anywhere was over 200. <laughs> I couldn't get an exact figure, so I didn't want to put that one in. Um, question number nine was around the uh, expensive games being sold at auction. So Mar Super Mario 64 was sold for one and a half million. Which game broke the record a month later? It was a 1985 copy of Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. From the NES? Yeah. From the NES, yeah. Yeah. So Super Mario Brothers for the NES sold for two million dollars unopened. Yeah. Go and have a yeah. When we've done this podcast, go and have a yeah. uh, a watch on YouTube because it is quite interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's that one. I think my one's the one I mentioned is different by uh, Carl, Carl Jobs. His name is the very cool documentary on it. Awesome. Yeah, I'll, uh, cool that'll be my uh, that'll be my nighttime viewing. Yeah, I think uh, yeah. a lot of these sort of things about it came out all at the same time. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, it the, the, keeps happening. It's specifically with Nintendo games as well. I guess the mm. documentary goes into that. Yeah. Um, and question number 10 What color eyes does Mario have? They are blue. Oh, yeah, cool. Wahoo. So at the end, uh, end of round two, uh, Sonny, how many did you get in that round? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six again. So you're on 12. Finn, how many did you get? It's still beating me. I've got five. So you're on nine, so it's 12, nine to Sunny. Going into round three, 
Uh, before we go into round three, the winner of the meat raffle was Blue Ticket 110. Goes to Tracy to get your meat bundle. <laughs> <laughs> I think, t to be fair, Finn, you'd have drawn with me if you'd have got Bob Hoskins, because I think we all got this, we got the same answers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Round number three and the final round of this week's G&G &G Pub Quiz Eliminator is all about our favourite billionaire, Vincent Kennedy McMahon. <laughs> Question number 10. Sorry, round number one. No, I've got it completely wrong. <laughs> round number three, Vince McMahon, question number one. I don't know what happened there, bit of a brain freeze. Which, but it was the thought of Vince McMahon, who just, just sent me, sent me mental. All over the place, just like- All over the, all, all over the hockey, all over the hockey. Question number one. Which bodily function, for example, coughing or farting or whatever, does Vince supposedly get angry about? <laughs> Which bodily function does Vince supposedly get angry about? Question number two. In which US state was Vince McMahon born? In which US state was Vince McMahon born? Question number three. At which Royal Rumble did Vince famously tear his quads? Oh. Yeah, uh, which Royal Rumble did Vince famously tear his quads? Question number four. Who did Vince pin to become ECW champion in 2007? Question number five. From which number did Vince win the 1999 Royal Rumble? Question number six. What is the name of Vince McMahon's yacht? What is the name of Vince McMahon's yacht? Question number seven. As of 2021, what is Vince's net worth estimated to be? Give you a clue, it's in the billions. Question number eight. In what year was the inaugural season of the XFL? First time round. Question number nine. Vince wrestled his last match in 2012 on an episode of Raw in a no contest against which current AEW wrestler? Uh -huh. Vince wrestled his last match in 2012 on an episode of Raw in a no contest against which current AEW wrestler? And question number 10, which UFC fighter mimics Vince McMahon's billionaire strut? Which UFC fighter mimics Vince McMahon's billionaire strut? Okay, does anyone need me to repeat any questions? No. Good. Cool, let's go through it then. Question number one, which bodily function does Vince supposedly get angry about? It's sneezing. Yep, yep. Because he doesn't like being not being in control of his body. Weird, weird. Apparently, I think I've talked about this before, apparently Vince can grow an epic beard. But he shaves it because he doesn't like the thought of the beard taking over his face, i.e. the beard is winning. He has to be winning. <laughs> Fucking Fascinating such man. Such a weird, weird Fascinating beard. man. I'd love to see him with a beard. Oh, apparently he can, he can grow an epic one. Um, question number two, which US state was Vince McMahon born? It was North Carolina. North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> Question number three, at which Royal Rumble did Vince famously tear his quads? It was the 2005 Royal Rumble. Oh, oh, wow, guess close. right. Get the fuck in. So close. Who did Vince pin to become ECW champion in 2007? It was Bobby Lashley. Yep. Yeah, you got it, mate. 
From which number did Vince win the 1999 Royal Rumble? It was what? number two. Two. Oh, wow. What is the name of Vince McMahon's yacht? No idea. The no. answer apparently is sexy bitch. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Excuse of me. Of course it is. Yeah. Sexy bitch. <laughs> We're going to sexy bitch this weekend. <laughs> gonna tell the sexy, of the back of sexy bitch out on the water. Exactly, that's exactly why he's calling it that. Test. Yeah, sexy bitch out on the seas. <laughs> As of 2021, what is Vince net, Vince's net worth estimated to be? The answer is 2.1 billion dollars. So, wow, I put 1.3. I bet five. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Short change versus someone like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk. Yeah. Well, well, so not, skin. Skin. not skin, no, not skin. <laughs> can not can sure. lose 70 million on the uh, XFL and just be like, fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what year was the inaugural season of the XFL? It was 2001. Yep. yep. So. Inaugural season 2001 ceased to operate 2001. <laughs> That's actually what it says on the Wikipedia page. It's brilliant. Yeah, unreal. Um, Vince wrestled his last match in 2012 on an episode of Raw in a no contest against which current AEW wrestler? I put Paul White. Paul oh, White. Quiet. Finn, what did you put? Uh, I can't remember who was around then, but uh, with Daniel Bryan. The answer was CM Punk. That was my other choice. I was going to put Daryl Bryan. Ah, damn it. And question number 10, which UFC fighter mimics Vince McMahon's oh. billionaire struts? The answer is Colin McNugget. No, Colin Conor McGregor, of course. Yeah. That <laughs> is the McNugget. end of round three, not round one, like I said earlier. Uh, that's the end of round three. So, Sonny, what did you get? Six, again. Wow. So, 18. Finn? Uh, I got a, a 20. <laughs> no, I got three. <laughs> three? You got three? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. I've got the so, sneezing, I've got Bobby Lashley, and I've got Colin McGregor. Colin McGregor. Colin McNugget. Wow. Okay. That means this week's winner and taking a 1 0 lead in the Games and Grouts pub, eliminate, pub quiz eliminator is Mr. Sonny Garner. Congratulations. Well done. I was never going to be sunny in wrestling questions. Come on now. We'll, uh, we'll be back <laughs> next week with three more rounds for the G&G pub quiz and another meat raffle. We all know Vince McMahon is Sonny's favourite wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can I? I'll, I'll, just, I'll read out the. Uh, I'll read out the sudden death just because uh, I won't use it again. Um, across WWF and WWE, including pay per views, how many matches did Vince have oh. in total? In his whole wrestling career, uh, 24. 23. What would you have gone for, Finn? I did 24. Very oh. close. 62. <laughs> really? <What>? Jesus. <laughs> Bloody hell. Jesus. <laughs> That's Bad more legend. than some wrestlers actually manage in their in, in actual wrestlers manage in their career. Yeah. Well, it was wow. strange because on, on one website it said 56, and then on another website it said 62. So it's. I went with 62. Yeah, there. but that's still a lot. Yeah, yeah. 19 pay-per-view matches as well. <laughs> so, And yeah. he's been WWE champion. And he's yeah. champion. And he's WWE champion, yeah. And won the Royal Rumble. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and he fought God. Yeah, and won. Yep. And won, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Big Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Vince. Gotta love him, isn't you? Gotta love him. Yeah. Good what times. A man, what a man. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> oh man, that was good, that was. That was good. I enjoyed that. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. Look forward to uh, looking forward to next week's. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh right. Let's talk wrestling. Let's. Oh, what an interesting week, eh? Yes, it What has. a week. What a um week. so the big talking point. Coming out of Monday, 
uh, was that Big E was going to, he put on Twitter that he was going to cash in his money in the bank contract um, on the night, obviously, um, against whoever won out of Bobby Lashley and Randy Orton. Mm-hmm. And he won. Big E yeah. did, yes. is the WWE champion. Get in. Awesome. Well deserved. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Really, really cool. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was strange that, you know, he announced it on social media. I'm assuming it was obviously to sort of try and knock ratings up a little bit. They were going up yeah. against um, the NFL on Monday. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, they were always going to be up against it. But, yeah, I'm really happy for Big E. It was cool that um, the New Day sort of came down to celebrate with him as they, you know, they would do. Yeah. And now Big E has officially been uh, drafted to Raw. Yeah. 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 No, cool. it's, it's, it, is, it is really cool. And uh, I'm glad that it was a cash-in that didn't, you know, fail. Mm. It, was yeah. a, it was a successful cash-in. I'm, I'm glad of that. And I'm glad it's... I'm glad it's happened. I, I've enjoyed Bobby Lashley's run as champion. Me too. Yeah. And, and I think he'll be champion again at some point. Uh, but yeah, it was. I'm. I'm uh, yeah, it's it's great. It's great to see Biggie as as champion. It yeah. might make me want to watch Raw. Just that <laughs> bit, maybe. Yeah, the, 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 the Raw was actually not terrible. It's pretty good. Okay. Well, did I did I read or hear correctly that Vince wasn't there this week? And then, um, I don't know. Then you've just yeah, said, I think you did read that correctly. Yeah. And then and then Finn said, "Oh, Raw was all right." Hey, uh, there you go. That explains it. More than a coincidence. Mm. <laughs> Perhaps he was out on the high seas on sexy bitch. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'm not going to be in Raw. I'm going to be out on sexy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was quite a, quite a funny or oh, this bad botch. Um, I maybe saw this. It would be the Tamina versus Nikki Nikki Ash. Nikki, uh, almost a superhero, Nikki ASH. ASH, Nikki Ash, superhero, almost. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. Uh, she did basically a spinning like, DDT uh, from like top rope. Uh, went for the pin, ref count in three, Tamina clearly kicked out. Uh, and then they played Tamina's music and they announced Tamina as the winner, even though Nikki clearly won the match. How'd you fuck Weird. up like that? <laughs> Wow. I'd, I'd, people are saying it might have been like a miscommunication error. Maybe they changed the finish on the ply and someone didn't get the memo. Maybe the ref didn't hear it properly or something. <laughs> but yeah, so Nikki won with Tamina's music and got called Tamina in the process. Awesome. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Almost it's a superhero change. Tamina. Ash. Yeah. Tamina Ash. Yeah. Tamina but there Ash. you go. <laughs> uh, Otherwise, yeah, decent show. A bit messy, that. A little bit messy. A little bit messy. I mean,. Um, Raw can only get better. It can only get more interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, this Raw coming up next week is the last one before Extreme Rules. So, mm. oh, you would assume that what we get at Extreme Rules is Lashley versus Big E for the title. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have thought so. That'd be good. Yeah. I can't help but feel that the tag team titles either need to be joined with SmackDown, make one. Mm. Um, or, or they just need to start taking it a bit more serious because mm. what the one thing I'm sick to death of is tag team champions going for other championships whilst they're the tag team champion. Yeah. Just be part also, of one division or be a part of another. Yeah. Yeah, what's these weird like, mis like mismatch teams like well can they get along blah blah blah, blah. it's like yeah. we've got RK Bro which admittedly is very funny and very good and then we've also got uh, on the women's side um, Nikki Ash and Rhea Ripley basically the same story uh, but women uh-huh. yeah. yeah and then yeah just teams like that which don't make a whole lot of sense I mean look, yeah not that I didn't like the teams like I said RK Bro is great but other times it's just yeah it just didn't work no it doesn't I mean you know, you've got to start having actual tag teams be... I mean, back in the day, I mean, you had tag teams all over the place. Yeah. You, had, you know, LOD, the Beverly Brothers, Money Incorporated, Demolition, mm. the Heart Foundation, the Rockers. You, know, you could fucking reel off a shitload of tag teams, the, uh, the Natural Disasters. You know, so many tag teams, and they formed a very good tag team division. Mm. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, even, you know, the 90s, you had the New Age Outlaws, 
Yeah, you have the, uh, the, the, the totally the new... EPA. Yeah. Too cool. <laughs> right, right to censor were a tag yeah. team. You know, there was, you know, you had actual tag teams, but now they're just throwing teams together. Um, yeah. But they I mean, want them yeah. involved in other stuff as well. I just don't get it. Yeah, when they do make a tag team, they break them up almost immediately. I had a hurt business for a while. That was cool. And then they broke up out of yeah. nowhere. Yeah, you had two people who were doing nothing, doing something, and with the tag team champions looking pretty good. So what do you do? You break them up and take the titles off them. Because of course you mm-hmm. do. Yeah. And then Sanity lasted about five minutes. Um, yeah. The Ascension, like the Ascension came up. You fucking split them up. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. That was lots of, yeah. Made them look like jokes in the process. Yeah. Buried them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you I'm need worried for MSK. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, NXT's got great tag teams. If you're yeah. doing a fresh restart of NXT, then move some of the tag teams that are established up. So mm. yeah, Imperium, great tag team. You can really rebuild a tag team division mm. by bringing up some of the teams from NXT. So, you know, yeah, Imperium, MSK, you know, uh, Hit Row, Legado yeah, yeah. del Fantasma. You know, you've got ready-made teams here that you could really build a tag team division around yeah, yeah. good young bets you know the usos they are a tag team so that's acceptable yeah. for them to be the tag team champions yeah, yeah. so what we've got we've got usos new day uh digging and rude i guess yeah the dirty um, dogs, dirty dirty dogs. dogs. terrible name top down i can see struggling to find think of anyone else in yeah tag team. exactly it's so street bad Lucha, Lucha street Brothers. profits there you go street, street profits, profits. Yeah. Viking, tag team. The viking experience experiment <laughs> Knowledge, whatever the Viking Raiders, the Lost Art, stream. yeah, <laughs> yeah, Viking so, yeah, Raiders that's... of the Lost Ark experience. <laughs> about six or seven between two brands, like three, three each. Uh, uh, Alpha Academy, do they count? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I so. yeah. Again, that's like between two separate brands, so it's like three or four. Yeah, exactly. Per... So you may as yeah. well just do combine. what you do with the women's de- tag team division and just combine just 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 have the champions float between the two brands because yeah that would just be better and more competitive because then you haven't got to throw tag teams together like aj styles and omos why did they <laughs> yeah, exactly, be yeah. the tag team champions what did yeah. that do for anybody yeah no weird no it didn't, you know what I mean? didn't do anything did it it didn't do no, anything for anybody but omos because he needed that guidance of someone experienced and seasoned you know, to, to, to help him grow as a performer. And that's fine. I've got an issue with that. But you don't need to put the tag team titles on them, you know? Yeah. So for me, the, 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 the tag division is the real issue for me at the minute because it's like you, you don't even have tag team titles defended on pay-per-views. You have, you know, originally, wasn't it going to be Randy Orton versus Lashley at Extreme Rules for the title? Yeah. With no raw tag team titles defended. Pretty, yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And the tag titles are going to be de- defended on this week's war, I think. Yeah. So, I mean... I've, I've literally just... I've just... Look, I've just Googled um, current WWE tag teams and you're right, it's about... in On the men's side of things, it's it's about four tag teams per division. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, that's not good enough, is it? Uh, no. And, 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 and that's... And that's and that's with them reaching a little bit. That's with them saying that Jinder and his two, the two, the two oh, yeah. guys, him are a tag team, and the Mysterios. And I mean, I guess the Mysterios were tag champs recently. So, um, so yeah, it, it, yeah. So they are clutching, really, aren't they? Oh God, yeah, they're clutching big time. Yeah, big time. The, the, that, that's the it's easy, quite easily the weakest division on main roster WWE. Both sides, yeah. the yeah, tag yeah. team. The, the list I've just looked at had uh, Lucha, ha- Lucha House Party down. Are they both? Are they all still there? Well, Grand, Met- Grand Metalik and uh... Lince Dorado, right, yeah. Yeah, are they both still there, are they? Yeah, yeah. Kalisto was released, though, right? Yes, he was. Yeah, Kalisto's yeah. gone. Yeah. Right, Kalisto was released. Lucha House Party, fine. I can accept that because they've been a team for a while. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. Not that you ever see them competing for the tag titles. No, exactly. But, <laughs> no. Um, they had a little feud with the Hurt Business, didn't they, at that time? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but otherwise, then not around that division at all, are they? No, no, no. It it is poor. It is weak. Um, you you have very little. I have very little interest in that division. But same. Well, they give you no reason. I mean, they don't give us any. Yeah, they don't give us any reason to. You know, there are yeah. some great. I mean, the the Usos are the Usos are amazing. 
Oh, yeah, know. the Usos are awesome, yeah. Absolutely. Above yes. and beyond the best tag team that WWE have, actual tag team. And it's, yeah. And it's not, it, yeah, exile God, yeah, 100%. And, it, and it's not like that, it's not a case of not liking tag team wrestling because we talked last week about how good the yeah. AEW tag title match was at yeah. All Out. Potentially, well, if, if, if there's a better match this year somewhere, I want to see it. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, it's it's not it's not a case of uh, not liking tag wrestling. Tag wrestling's fucking cool. I mean, look yeah. at you know back in the, I know harping back back in the day and stuff, but you know Hardy Brothers, Edge, Christian, Dudley Boys, I mean, fucking hell, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. Those TLC matches were just unbelievable. So yeah, it can be done. Tag team wrestling can yeah, be. Yeah, they were you know showpiece matches for the Attitude Era. They're they're matches that people look back on with like fond memories. When was the last time there was a memorable tag team championship match on main roster WWE? No, can't think. Yeah, can't think of one. No, because yeah, there there isn't one. (laughs) You want no? Yeah, you've had okay matches. I was going to say the but, Shield versus the Wyatt family, but that wasn't really it. Was that really a tag match? Probably wasn't, was it? Was that the trios Classic. match that they had? That was the trios yeah. match. Yeah, it was yeah. like a six-man tag. Mm. So that's another thing. I mean, we, we were talking about this in Discord the other day that AEW have got enough trios to have a trios tag team championship division. Yeah, yeah. that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. But WWE can't even find a pot to piss free, in in terms know, of tag free, teams. Freebird free bird rule it, you know, that'd be that'd be awesome. Well, it'd be, tri- it'd be trios tag team titles. So it'd be, yeah, it'd be some of them have got more, haven't they? Some of them have got like four in a stadium. Oh, so. sorry. Yeah, you see, you see what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, you could absolutely do that. It'd be amazing. Yeah. And, you know, if I was booking the tag team division, that's exactly what I would do. I would, in WWE, I mean, obviously AEW is fine with it. But I would, you know, when the draft happens, you... You draft all the teams together. None of this splitting them up shit, making them go <laughs> separate because it just never works. No, like you know, splitting the street profits up. One of them's doomed for failure. That one is Angelo Dawkins. <laughs> yep. Sorry, right? I, I don't mean to sound like a twat like with that, <laughs> but that's the case, isn't it? Because Montez Ford is the exciting one. Is the most charismatic one. But together, they're magic. They're really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you you draft the tag teams together, and you you know, announce that you're going to sort of combine the championships and the, and the champions will float between both Raw and SmackDown. So, yeah. um, you, you know, you have the two sets of champions fight. So you have our team, you have RK Bro versus the Usos. The Usos win, then they can go back and forth to Raw and between Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. But you need to really solidify your team. So you bring some teams up from NXT that, you know, now that they're bringing new guys through, probably aren't going to get, you know, much of a look in. So, you know, you, you do bring Imperium up. They look like a pair of action men at the minute. It's ridiculous. <laughs> That's very great, isn't it? Amazing. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. right they're they're yeah. both chiseled from stone. It's insane. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I always get them mixed up, but the 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 bold one. Um uh Fabian Eichner. Eichner, Eichner yeah. yeah. No, I, yeah. I was watching that match earlier from, from NXT and I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's just all of a sudden he's just gone. I mean, he always yeah. was. Do you know what I mean? He's like both of them, but like Bartel's ripped now. He unbelievable. Wasn't yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's chiselled now. It's crazy. They've been so, on uh, been on some sort of uh, fitness yeah. fitness kick, haven't they? Yeah, amazing. Yeah, definitely. So also, you bring... accidentally, accidentally turned the face facing those nobodies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Nobodies. They, they, they... <laughs> Finn's got a real problem with new people. He didn't want to didn't no, want to no. get into AEW because he didn't want to learn new people. <laughs> no, now no, no, NXT is bringing new people in. He doesn't want to know they're nobodies. <laughs> no, no, it's because the new people they brought in. Just, the well, fuck, Sammy Guevara, nobody. <laughs> That's not what I mean. I mean they're not the no, young blocks, nobodies. <laughs> nobody. I know what you mean though. You'd never seen them before. Yeah, what so. I mean. yeah, yeah, one yeah. of them was in the breakout tournament. Yeah, but before that, you know. But yeah, no, before that, he, he wasn't in WWE. No. no. I didn't care. The audience didn't care. No. That's fair. Yeah. But it's So you bring Imperium up, okay, and you make them an integral part of that tag team division. Yeah. Um, you know, you bring, you know, Legado Del Fantasma and Hit Row. You move them out of NXT, there's two ready-made tag teams. Yeah. Plus Santos Escobar is awesome and can do stuff on his own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
Uh, MSK, you know, you take the tag team titles off them in favor of some new team in NXT. Um, grizzled young veterans. There's so many because obviously the focus on NXT now is bringing new people in. Yeah, of course. Which is fine. It is now truly going to be developmental. Obviously, the, the mm. there is still some people left for now, but I do think when the draft rolls around, I think you'll start to see some people shift up to the main roster um, and or get released. But I think some people will sort of go to the main roster and, you know, they really need to sort of start establishing some sort of more, some sort of order with the divisions on the main roster. Yeah. Tag team being the first priority. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sort the tag teams out. Yeah. I would even do away yeah. with one of the mid cards. Like take yeah. away either the United States or the IC title. Ooh. Obviously, it's the United States. United right? States. You don't even take the IC title. You away. don't take the IC title away. But I, I would take that away. Right make, you can't take that away. <laughs> yeah, make make that division more competitive. Yes. Because you've got yeah. too many guys just floating around the mid card. You need to make it. You need to make it competitive. Is it bad that I couldn't actually name the IC champion right now? Uh, it's Nakamura, but yes. Oh yeah. But you know, I, I wouldn't. Bl- you can't blame me for not knowing that. I think that's bad. that's bad on my part, I think, more than anything. No, I, I didn't think about it as well. Yeah, yeah but because he won it on SmackDown. Yeah. Well, won it on an episode of SmackDown off yeah. Apollo Crews. No, yes. Is that right? That is right, isn't it? Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, you, you know... US champ. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. I don't really have too much of an issue with two heavyweight championships. Or maybe I do, I'm not sure. One bow brand, yeah. One per I, think brand. One, I think one per brand's fine. Um, I just think, and we've talked about this before as well, they just need to do away with this sort of Raw versus SmackDown thing at Survivor Series. You know, bring bring back bragging rights. Just yeah. just... Bring back bra- bragging rights and you don't need to have that at Survivor Series. Yeah. Survivor Series. Yeah. You've got yeah. Sasha Champions as well, haven't you? Which yeah. is what that is about. So, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, do, do they, they don't do Raw and SmackDown at Clash of Champions, do they? I think they do, yeah. I think isn't, that's it, just, yeah. isn't it just that's sort of the, the old is, thing of Night of Champions where all the titles are defended? No, I think it's... I can't. Um, I thought it was, I don't know. I, th- I thought the last Clash of Champions was a... I might be wrong. Who knows? Yeah. But either I think, way... I think there's been both it, it, it has, yeah. I think it has, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think you're probably right. Live a series things, but not because I always think of Night of Champions where they're like they make a big deal out of all of the uh, maybe it's that. being defended in one night, which maybe it might that. which should be a pay per view thing anyway. In my yeah, opinion. <laughs> to, to do it every pay per view, yeah, yeah, you, your championship should be defended on pay per view, yeah. All right, okay, well, keep two, keep the two mid card titles then. So one each yep. brand, two heavyweight titles. The women's the women's division is pretty poor on the main roster. I would, I would honestly make that one as well, <coughs> because one there's not one belt. But you know, it. I mean, that's what I would do, not because they only deserve one belt, but because there's not enough uh, women between the two brands to really warrant having two belts. Yeah, it's not quite. Yeah, the roster's deep enough for one belt, not two. Yeah, like the tag team division. Yeah. Yeah, I agree the with that. Division, the division is sta- is is enough for one division, but not for two. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, yeah, the, 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 them they need to really establish some sort of order with what's going on with the championships. The, the draft is a perfect opportunity to do it. Don't get me wrong; they're, they're, I know they're not going to pull the trigger on just having one tag team title, even though they should. No. <laughs> yeah, probably not. But um, you know. The, the the draft coming up in a couple of weeks, it really is a, a good opportunity to to try and freshen it up and bring some life back. Not so much to SmackDown because SmackDown does well every week. Uh, but Raw, you know, Raw's really struggling. Uh, you know, and we've talked about it a lot on this podcast, but um, Raw is struggling and it needs freshening up. Yeah, big time. Was it, did, um, did, uh, I know we don't, sort of overly analyze ratings on this podcast, but Dynamite the, had better ratings than Raw, didn't it? Last week uh, or this better week? ratings yeah. in the eight in the eighteen to or whatever it is they right. do. The I, 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 think, I think. And yeah. I, I, I admittedly didn't read overly too much into it, saw the headline, which is a 
not something you should always do. You should always probably read deeper into it. But uh, yeah. yeah, but it's it's a it's it's a should be a bit of a warning shot, shouldn't it? Over to <laughs> well, it should. I mean, it shows yeah. that it shows the level. Uh, you know, good. the the group of people that are uh, are tuning into Dynamite and not Raw. Yeah, SmackDown's fine. SmackDown's doing okay, uh, both ratings wise and key demographic. Yeah, it's Raw yeah. that's struggling. It's raw yeah. the struggle. Yeah. So you know the draft is a is a good opportunity to freshen up the roster a bit, um, shift some people around, move some people up from NXT, and really try and push forward in a positive way with Big E as champion. Yeah, I, I think it, it just almost feels like it needs freshening up a little bit. Like, and we'll probably go on to talk about NXT, but yeah, NXT felt fresh this week, and I know that that's the whole idea. Mm-hmm. And we've got to learn these new guys, and, and and you know get to know who they are and all of that. But it felt felt fresh, didn't it? It did feel felt fresh. Yeah. Who these new guys are, you know, um, and all of that. You know, we we haven't sadly, you know, I'm no longer on NXT. We haven't got Adam Cole anymore. We haven't got all of those guys, you know. So it, it's it's like it's only it just felt. Yeah, and I think Raw needs something like that. You know, it just needs something mm-hmm. to come. Some some something happen. Needs a, a shot in the arm. Almost. It does. And, you know, there's a lot, of, you know, a lot of real potential for good matchups with Big E as champion. You know, break AJ Styles away from him, put him back in the singles divisions and, you know, have him go after Big E for the championship or move it, you know, maybe don't move him to SmackDown. Obviously, there's that issue with him and Heyman. I'm not sure if it even is still an issue oh, or yeah. not, but oh, yeah. AJ Styles is a pro. Is You know, he really is a pro and I'm sure he'll do whatever he's asked to do, but they've moved him around quite a bit. Maybe keep him on Raw, but make him a, you know, a real focus point you know he's a big superstar yeah. make the fucking most of him before he does eventually call it a day because yeah. you know people like AJ Styles are once in a lifetime wrestlers yeah, like best- Kenny Omega you know like, it's that, yeah, that kind exactly. of person yeah yeah that's that's how I always yeah look at it but um, yeah, get Keith Lee over to Smackdown give him a fresh start yeah <laughs> Give him a start yeah, yeah. Drew McIntyre give him you know a new lease of life on Smackdown mm-hmm. yeah so the draft's going to be really interesting, and I hope yeah. they they do it right, and it is the start of something good because they know they need to change. They know it. They they have to know it. That's why you know they pulled the trigger <coughs> on Big E and advertised it in advance. They know yeah. they have to change. SmackDown's fine. You don't really need to touch it too much. Just freshen up the roster a little bit and maybe give some guys who have gone stale on Raw a fresh chance on SmackDown. Mm. Um, but it's Raw that's the real issue. Get some guys in there from NXT. Get um, some of the, the sort of the mid-tier guys from SmackDown who aren't really doing an awful lot over to Raw. There's just freshen it up. Give us some new storylines. Give us something. Give us a reason to tune in. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, right, yeah. Let's let's talk about NXT. So uh, this is what NXT looks like now. Very colourful. <laughs> NXT 2.0. Mm, yes. uh, it's what they're calling it. And it's no longer the Capital Wrestling Center. It is the home of NXT 2.0. Gotcha. Mm. Yeah. Um, all right, Finn, I'm going to go with you first because I feel like you're going to be the most critical of this. What did you think to NXT this week? Um, it was good in some respects. I, it's the main event was good, um, except for that random guy they added, whatever his name was. Von Wagner. Von, Von Wanker, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's just so random. As soon as they announced he was going to be in it, I was like, oh god, he's going to win, isn't he? <laughs> it's just it, it didn't like he didn't they didn't introduce him like they they announced him like we were supposed to know who he was. Like we, you know, we kind of Von Wagner, you know, you know, the guy who saved Carla Wiley. He's like, okay, what? And he came out to the most generic looking, well, I don't know, entrance thing, you know, like generic tights that didn't suit him. And just, he just didn't really, I mean, he was he had good moves there. I did, you know, he didn't breast me, but he shouldn't be main event. Like he shouldn't be throwing right into the main event straight away. And he shouldn't have guys, new guys beat like guys like LA Knight, you know, straight away. I mean, he was good. I liked him, but... They haven't beat people. It's not like LA Knight haven't having against like local local you know competitors or whatever. Build them up, have a few matches against local competitors, and then put them against LA Knight. The thing is, I agree with you to a degree. Yeah. But I understand the direction they're looking to take here. This is this isn't this is a 
this isn't a a slow build for a reboot. Yeah, this I is, think it's all just this is a just, we yeah. want to get things moving quite quick because yeah. I like I said before, I mean I anticipate that they're going to move some of the old NXT guys up to the main roster as part of the draft so they need to mm. get these guys on TV very quickly to establish them. Yeah. I think it's just a bit too sudden for me. It's just like here's all these guys, new guys, go, go, they've all beaten everyone you love no one love. You know. <laughs> Which I, I get. I mean obviously um Bron Breaker. Good name. Um which is a bad name. I mean his Terrible name is name. Rex Steiner, which is a good name as it is. Terrible yeah. Name. Just be called Rex Steiner. You're yeah. the son of Rick Steiner and the nephew of Scott Steiner, which you can definitely tell by looking at him. Yeah, yeah. Like, as soon as you said that on Discord, I didn't know that beforehand because they didn't mention it, which it probably should have done. And I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Well, they changed his name, didn't they? So, I mean, there, there was <laughs> yeah. no reason for him to even slightly, uh, you know, mention that. But, yeah. you know, uh, the LA Knight thing didn't really, I didn't really understand. I didn't understand why they had him go out uh, and lose. Yeah, because he's been the main event as well. So why? It's yeah. So, so I didn't really understand that, but I understand. I mean, it looks as though that um, Break is going to get pushed to the moon in the new NXT. That's yeah. fine. I mean, I'm okay with that. It's you know impressive because he does look good. So what we, what we need to remember here is they're trying to they're trying to fast track some of these guys in because there's going to be guys moving out. Hmm. So they want to establish this as developmental and a brand new nxt we want new faces you know so we saw the uh, the tag team that um the in imperium beat okay yeah. but you know i i liked them i thought uh, <coughs> the promo uh you know the little promo that they showed beforehand was quite good really <laughs> oh, no, i don't i don't think it was terrible at all i thought you know it establishes them as you know a try hard tag team and that's what we're yeah. going to get. But we have to remember that we've never seen these guys before, so we we, we can't. And they're they're new. These are like fresh performance center people. So you know they're they're all trying to find what works for them on TV. And not everything's going to be a hit. No. Um, but you know that they're trying to fast track these people onto TV so that we get a true developmental brand and not the essentially what was a glorified indie show that we knew and loved mm. because that NXT is no more, you know, what yeah. this is now is NXT with fresh faces and some other people just to pad it out a little bit for now. Yeah. 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 Uh, I get it. I do get it. Yeah, I get it. It's going back to what it was originally, you know, you bring, you bring th through Seth Rollins, you know Roman Reigns, the Wyatts, and then eventually, once they've had their once they've had their time in NXT, they got to the main roster and then be be amazing on there. Yeah, um, I think what obviously happened in NXT is you had guys that have been there for for absolutely years, and it's like, well, if they're not going to move, <clears throat> if they're not going to move on, say move on, move to the main roster, is that really developmental? So I guess that's the idea, isn't it? You just have yeah. that. I mean, you NXT was churn. always, yeah, NXT was always, always developmental. You always have that churn, yeah. You always, in, you always knew when someone was about to go up because they'd lose their last match and they'd all be in tears and blah 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 and all of that. But now, you, I mean, you got Adam Cole, who, who for years we were like, he's going to the main roster, he's going to the main roster, and now he's in AEW. You know, you know, Champa is still around, Gargano is still around, you know, and you just think. These guys should have moved up years ago. And the problem, yeah. the reason they, they haven't moved up is because on the main roster, they've been stockpiling wrestlers and there's actually no room for them. Yeah. So yeah. you've had this big clear out. You've had all of these releases, which people have been up in arms about, which it happens. And it does. Are, you are you really now that bothered that uh, certain, certain people have been released? No, because they've gone on to do probably bigger and better things somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And it's just freeing up that space, as you say, for some of your more established NXT guys to start to go onto the main roster, freshen that up. Yeah. They're going to be back on the road soon, or they already are, so you're going to need to have that constant rotation of wrestlers. Uh, and then, yeah, your NXT, we are, we're almost like starting again. We're watching it. It's like, it's like watching a new promotion. Like, oh, 
never heard of these guys before. These are good. I've, I've, never, it's, it's, I've never seen her before. She's good. Yeah. Um, it's, so like that, watching, it's like watching amateur pro wrestling. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, yeah, it's like going to your first indie show and you haven't got a clue who any of them are. Yeah. And then if you go back and you go back again, and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember it. I remember her. She was amazing. I remember him. He was class, you know. Yeah. And that's I mean, exactly this, what this is. This version of NXT is going to take a few weeks to find its own identity. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because so what do we think happens with Tommaso Ciampa and his, you know, his title run? So you think, I, you I think he's champion for a while? Or? I think he has a, a long feud with um, Breaker. Mm. And I think Breaker wins the championship. And that's your real start. <laughs> That's when you see people like Von Wagner, um, you know, start to be in and around the main event more. I, I understand why that they, they put a new guy in the main event because it's this isn't NXT that we know. This is NXT. This is developmental. This is true developmental NXT. These are young guys, yeah. young guys and girls who are, you know, getting their first experience on TV in, and for some of them in front of people yeah yeah and these are the people that they want to be stars they're the they're the these are the guys like von wagner obviously he's somebody that they have enough stock in or that they think that he could be one of the ones to carry the brand going forward yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, i wanted to pop a point of way though i don't want some nobody oh i know i know, <laughs> I know what you wanted but that's not what you're yeah. gonna get in an xtn anyway. i know yeah I know I, it sucks, but I'm not sure what the situation is with Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, I don't yeah. know whether he's he's truly injured or or something like that, or they've got plans. I would, for I would him. say, yeah, I would say he's going to start a feud with Pete Dunn, but then that with his new entity, that would make sense because he wants someone new in there. <coughs> maybe you pair Wagner with with uh, Kyle O'Reilly and have him against Rich Holland and Dunn, maybe. Yeah, I can see that. Holland, Holland's fairly new, isn't he? So yeah, Holland Holland's been around for a little while. He did some he did NXT UK for a bit. And yeah. he was around before with his real name in NXT as well, before he really found oh. an identity as Ridge Holland. So yeah. um, I can't remember his real name. Steve, do you remember? No. He played rugby, no. didn't he? Yes, he did. Can't remember his bloody name. No, I can't remember his name. But, um, you know, that's that, That's what we're going to get from NXT now. You're going to slowly see, um, you know, storylines develop with current NXT superstars that you know. And they're going to mm -hmm. have feuds with people that you don't. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. that's where you're going to see these new guys come up and start to mould what the show's going to be. But it, it is going to take a few weeks. I mean, mm. yep, they're fast tracking these guys onto TV, and I understand why. But yeah. we can't expect the show to to hit the ground running fresh out the gates because all this is all these guys they're new to us, they're new to that audience, yeah. um, they're new to everybody, they're new to they're new themselves to TV. And fans, yeah. So we've got to sort of give them a chance to 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 show what they can do, both in ring and on the mic. And it's quite exciting in a way because we're going to get to see these. We're going to get to see these like young guys develop their characters from scratch. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost it's, it's in a way it's kind of gone back to basics, hasn't it? It's gone back to yeah. its. It, NXT has gone back to its humble beginnings of like OVW, we, that kind of thing. We, we've know, got this FCW. We've, yeah, we've got this. We've got this person that we think could be a WrestleMania main eventer in three years. Let's let's you know. I mean, it's quite clear with like the tag division. They've obviously they're going to push the, the the Creed brothers, aren't they? Uh, who, by the way, I'm a big fan of already. Yeah, they're very good. Uh, yeah. Those those guys, they're fucking bruisers, man. They yeah. they are real wrestlers. They they they're a real tag team. They look so great and they've got great personalities without really saying anything. Yeah. You see yeah. them like picking guys up and throwing them around the ring and smiling and like wearing the amateur gear and stuff like that. And I I, mm. I took an instant shine to them when I when I saw yeah. them um on NXT this week. I, I very think American Alpha, but it works. It's, it's, yeah. it's well, the like thing it. is, I think it could be, uh, you know, yeah. uh, as I good think as American it's Alpha because I yeah, think they're really good. Thing. No, it's good. Yeah, the, that blonde guy reminds me a lot of Brock Lesnar. Yes, is, uh, saying a lot. Yeah, well, I, like, um, I like Diamond one as well. Diamond Mine as a faction is a good faction, and yeah. the new women just brought in. They just brought in as well. Yeah, yeah. looks yeah. the part, you know. And looks she was in amazing, Titan, you know? <laughs> Titan Games or something. Titan Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
Is that the thing that The Rock presented? And then I think yes, Cena's, right. done, it. Cena's yeah. done it as well, hasn't he? Cena's presented it. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you've got you've got guys um, like Carmelo Hayes. Yeah, yeah. Carmelo's great. I like him a lot. Yeah, he's he's uh, partnered he's up with uh, uh, Trick Williams. Yeah, mm. I like those two. They did, they did, they did impress me. I have to say, they've seem they've seemingly turned him heel. Yeah, but I had him turn heel by beating up another heel, so it's a bit weird. Um, unless they're trying to try to turn that other guy face. Maybe. Yeah. 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 And then you've got this guy time. who is playing uh, generic Italian mafia guy number one. Terrible Tony, accent. Tony Ta- D'Angelo. Yeah. Terrible Great. accent. He cannot do it. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> uh, and here is uh, Von Wagner looking like a bit Ooh. of a deer in headlights there. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, you know, you've got to give these guys a chance. You've, you've really yeah. got to sort of be yeah. patient with what, with the direction that they're looking to take NXT in. Um, is it the NXT we knew and loved? No. But is no. WWE a glorified indie showcase? No. It's a, NXT now is essentially what WWE is going to look like in five or ten years. Yeah. yeah. These guys yeah. are who we are going to be seeing main event WrestleMania, win championships, be the next John Cena, Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns. That, that That's what this NXT is looking to establish. And I think what, what has happened is they've seen a lot of people come up from NXT who were established stars on the independents and in NXT. And it just doesn't work for them on the main roster. Yep, yeah. you can put it down to bad booking in some instances, but sometimes it just doesn't work. Yeah. You know, there's an audience for these for, for some people. So the audience for Adam Cole is that NXT audience, and it's the AEW audience. It's people yeah. like us. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know, uh, you know, the audience for John Cena isn't us. It's not directed at us. It's directed at at children, and you know, it's directed at children. You know. Yeah. So WWE and AEW and Impact or whatever, they're very, very different audiences who want a very, very different product. Yeah. Um, I think WWE just need to reestablish their identity and stop trying to be something that they're not. Mm. No, I did I did like the new NXT as a whole. Um I did as I, I like Carmelo uh, and the Divana, I like the the Diamond Mine as a whole. Um but yeah, I'd say it's going to take a while for it to find this find this feet. Um, but no, Actually, I did. Essentially, you've got to find new favorites and least favorites again. Yeah, but no, I did like it on the whole. I think. Um, do we see Champa ending in the main roster once he loses that title? No. Or do you think he's done after that? Mm, well, in fact, I don't know. I say no. I say no, but I, I don't know. I mean, he can't yeah, hang around in NXT forever. He just can't. No. no, I know he said he doesn't want to go to the main master, but same with, same with Gargano as well, isn't it? He can't. Yeah. He can't hang around in NXT forever and. No, that's um, it. I mean, Gargano's contract apparently is up at the end of the year. But yeah. to me, he's he he. You can't keep taking every. Not everybody can go to AEW. No, of course yeah. not. All right, it's as simple as that. Not everybody can. No. So you know, Pete Dunne's just signed a new contract with WWE for three years. Um, yeah. you know, and I fully expect. Uh, I I expect Gargano to re-sign as well, because he yeah. he seems like a WWE guy. Um, Candice is pregnant, so he probably doesn't want to take that risk. True. So you know, I think I think Johnny Gargano sticks around, but there there are things you can do with Gargano on the main roster. There are mm-hmm. things you can do with Champ on the main roster, but again, it's all about understanding how to use that talent, yeah, and not just bringing them up for the sake of bringing them up because of who they are. You have to understand what you're going to do with that talent when they come up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It. Uh, I mean, I, I I watched a, a video a while back. Um, regarding NXT and the, the developmental and how all of that worked. And when they do call them up to the main roster, there is supposed to be like a six to 12 month plan for each one that goes up. Mm. It feels like that Vince probably doesn't give some of them a chance. They have one bad match and it's, uh, I'm done with, I'm done with he. Uh, I also think she. some were panic call ups. A hundred percent. Yeah. Some were absolute panic call ups. Like there was, you know, the, the, we could we could sit here for another probably hour and go through that, but it just needs a little bit more, like thought, thought and yeah. yeah, planning. And okay, we've got this, we've got this Bron Breaker, which is a name that I don't really like. Bad name, um, bad name. Tell me, I'm, I'm just yeah, I'm just going to call him Breaker Breaker. 
Because it just feels a bit like Braun Strowman, some of it. It just feels a bit weird. But anyway, yeah, it's, it's like, right, this, is, this is the plan for this guy. This is what we're going to do. This is this. This is this. And then in three years' time, you know, he needs to be he needs to be challenging for a title at WrestleMania. Not yeah. not the main, not the big, not the big belt or anything, you know, US or whatever. Yeah, you have that, to filter them in. They should have that for <clears throat> they should have that for each person. It's going to be interesting with NXT. They're pushing these new new uh, new guys and girls, um, but then you've also got yeah Pete Duns and Rich Holland and you know and all of those that you think well you got to put a belt on them sometime and they've been there a bit longer and well R- Ridge is I, th- I think Ridge Holland is going to be sort of part of this new sort of developmental. Yeah, I think he's he's very much part of that. And if anything, yeah. you see Pete Dunn move on. Yeah, um, yeah, and. I just, I just hope that. Well, that, I know again, but we need to ho- hope that WWE starts giving a bit more thought to these things. And of course, yeah. And you know, we you know, we say, I say, have faith in WWE, but it's very mm. difficult at times. Yeah. But yeah. you know, yes, I'm, I'm optimistic about the new NXT. I, d- I didn't hate it at all. I thought it was a bit slow starting. I thought it was a bit difficult to sort of get into initially because you're in that mindset of this isn't the NXT that I want to see. This isn't my NXT that I've loved for the last however many years. This is brand. This is something brand new. It looks completely different. Sounds completely different. Um, the ring's mic'd up different. The camera angles they're yeah. using are different. Who are these people that uh, that are coming in? Why have they got stupid names? There's so, so many different factors <laughs> to, to take in. And that 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 is a difficult barrier to get over as a wrestling fan, as yeah. an NXT fan, because now what you loved before is gone and it's something completely different. Mm. But once you sort of sit back and think about it, think about what it is and what it's supposed to become, I think it will become a, a lot easier to digest and it'll be, it'll be very interesting to see what it's going to be like going forward. Are uh, we going to get the five-star indie matches that we got before? No, we're not. But we are. what no. we are going to see is the stars of the future built up and we get to see that journey from scratch which is cool i think there's there's two there's two sort of key other two key dates i think i think it'd be interesting to see what the first takeover is like yeah. after this mm. uh rebrand and then in 12 months time let's see where nxt is i'm and gonna, I'll, I'm gonna I'll put it out there um nxt arrival 2.0 yeah, because the first one was yeah, NXT arrival. Was arrival. Yeah, I don't. I, I I get that they're trying to push that it's a new beginning and all of that, but the two point part is completely unnecessary. I think so, yeah. but it is no. so it's so obvious that it's a that it's a they've hit the re, restart button. They don't yeah. didn't need to call it two, but it just sounds shit. Yeah, NXT they don't need to keep. They don't need to keep saying it. Oh, yeah. oh, piss off. Yeah. Uh, it's it's yeah no I, I don't I don't like that but they may drop it eventually who knows maybe so Tommaso Ciampa is the NXT champion Tommaso and Ciampa. Uh, nice. Breaker is seemingly oh. challenging oh. Um, Tommaso Ciampa for that championship going forward which is cool and I'm all for it um, <laughs> one quick note uh, before we do go the wedding was fun. <laughs> yeah, very fun. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Look at his camel toe. <laughs> <laughs> Baldy <Jesus> ball. Christ. <laughs> camel toe. Camel toe. The camel toe. Baldy ball. Baldy division sign. <laughs> and uh, there is Dexter Gaylord Loomis um, <laughs> threatening the uh, the people uh, sitting down at the wedding with an axe, which I thought was really good. Good humour. Oh, see a wrestling yeah. wedding, not go to shit for a change. And it was all done in very good humour and good spirit. So NXT this week, um, a successful relaunch, if not a, a slightly um, <laughs> slightly odd one. But we'll get yeah, you. Of all names, why Gaylord? Come on. Because it's, <laughs> it's funny, got, Ben. I know. It's but it, it's, Yeah, it is funny. Like it, I, I, yeah. Imagine, imagine if this was NXT UK, and they called him Gaylord. Yeah, we'd be chanting Gaylord. That'd <laughs> yeah. be awesome. I'd be there. <laughs> be I'd be there doing it myself. Yeah. Gaylord, Gaylord. <laughs> It'd be awesome. It'd be amazing. It'd be so good. Uh, I wish that was actually just Goldberg's name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From Atlanta, it's Georgia. A- Gaylord, Gaylord, Gaylord. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, it'd be so good. Uh, right. Then the other thing on uh, NXT was Mandy Rose's new look. 
which oh, yeah. I approve. Very nice. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Manny Rose is a brunette now. Yeah, I approve. And yeah, I like um, the little faction he's got going on. Yeah, there's, it's got a name, but I forgot what it is. Poison something. I can't remember. Something yeah. like that. Anyway. No. But yeah, it's cool. I like, I, think... the, I like the direction they're going with that. I like um, Gigi Dolan as well and uh, JC Jane. I think they're cool. Me too. I feel like Manny Rose has improved a lot already since going back to NXT. Yeah, I agree. A lot more than she did when she was with bloody Dana Brooke. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. Cool. I think this does a lot more for her than um, a lot anything that on her main roster run did. Yeah, absolutely. I like yeah. it. And her being a heel seemingly is is going to be great. I think, with, especially with those two. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I love it. Right. Anybody else got anything they want to add before we go? We've been talking for ages. I could I, honestly, I could go on for another hour to be honest. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I feel much. like there's so much, there's so yeah. many levels of this that we could go into. Oh, definitely, definitely, but. But we'll save it for another podcast. It's all the podcasts are left of the year. We're good. It is. For Christmas. Right. Absolutely. 14 <laughs> weeks to Christmas, I think. Something like that. God. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> right. So this has been episode 154 of the Games and Graphs podcast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts across podcast services everywhere. 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 And youtube.com forward slash games graphs. Go check us out on all social media. That's at Games and Graps on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You can find us on TikTok as well. My name's Sunny G, and I've been with Finn Steele. Thank you. And Steve. See you later. And we will indeed see you next week for episode 155. Take it easy, guys. Goodbye. Thanks very much. Goodbye. Gay Lord. Gay Lord. <laughs>